Welcome back to another exciting C Sharp web tutorial. This one has to do with the shoe discount that we uh, reviewed during the logic exercises in the first week of class. Real quick, here's my form. You come here, you can see that I set all the properties including the start position, the accept, and the cancel button right there. Beautiful. I named all my components properly with Hungarian notation. And I want to make sure you know how to set the tab order. We do not stop on output only or read only text boxes. So if you come here and click here, you'll notice it's read only. Tab stop is set to false. Come here, go to view. You can also look at the tab order here. Labels you do not tab onto. We tab here to here. We don't stop here and we jump down to here. Okay done with that. Let's look at the code. The idea of the premise behind this is you enter in a tag color. You enter a shoe price. Based on the tag color, we figure out a discount and what the price is after. The clear button and exit button are pretty self-explanatory. We'll take a look at the clear button. We have four text boxes. We clear all four and we set the focus or set the cursor to be into the tag color every time you hit the clear button. Let's go look at the button click. If the user enters a red tag, you get 30% off. If you get a blue tag, you get 35% off. If you get a purple tag, you get 40% off. Notice I declare four decimal data types. Decimal, and here are their names, and we initialize them. We always declare, and then we initialize. If it's a decimal, you need to put an M here to tell C Sharp to treat it as a decimal data type or money, and puts it in here. We have a float, and notice we put an F here to treat the 0, 0.0 as a float when we put it in, in a string called tag color. Remember my four easy steps, declare, convert, calculate. And in this case, we're also doing conditional statements, and down here we output. All right, we declare variables. Notice I don't have to put the word decimal in front of here, like this, because I've already declared them up here, and actually C Sharp don't like it, because you declared it up here, and you declared it here. You only need to declare it once. You can start using it now here. Take the text box, value, dot text, convert it to a decimal and put in a decimal. We also take the text of the tag and put in a string, and I'll show you why in a minute. If the tag color, it knows when you write an if statement, you put parens to, be, um, to mark the beginning and end of the conditional statement. If the text that was entered was put into this variable, if that, notice it's a string, that's why we have an S there. Equals equals, that's equality. Notice a single equal is an assignment. If it equal equals capital R E D, or the S tag color equals equals lowercase red, we're going to assign a 0.3 uh, floating point discount to here. If it's not this, we check to see if it's equal to blue, or it's equal to lowercase blue. And if it is, we give a 35%. If it's purple or lowercase purple, 0.4. And if it's not this or this or this, we assign 0.0, .0 or no discount. Notice when you're doing a comparison, you always compare this compared to something else. This is a variable. This is a literal or constant. So when you're doing a compare and you have the variable, and you're comparing it using a relational operator to another one. So you have to have one compared to another, one compared to another. Now the calculations are pretty straightforward, but I do have to explain something here. Notice the discount is a floating point, and how do I know that? Well, there's an F, but also if you look right underneath, you see local variable float F discount percent. It's a float. However, this is a decimal, and this is a decimal. They're two different data types, even though they're numbers. To C sharp, you're comparing or multiplying two different things together, and you can't. So convert this temporarily to a decimal, not permanently, just during the calculation, and put uh, multiply it by the shoe price, and then put it into here. When the line's done, the conversion is goes away. I have a float and a decimal. Take the discount amount, subtract it from the shoe price, and it's the price after. Right here, I'm doing the reverse conversion. I'm taking the floating point discount percent, converting it to a string, and I want it formatted as a percent with two decimal, and we put in the text box. Mm -hmm. Here I have the price after, and you can see I ask it to be converted to a string with currency with two decimal positions, and I put in the text box. I'm taking the decimal, converting it to a string, and putting in the text. Remember, text and string are the same thing. Let's debug this and watch how it executes. So I'm going to put a breakpoint right here. 
and let's run it. Okay, I'm going to type in blue. I'm going to put a shoe press of 100. I'm going to hit tab, compute. And notice I come in here, I convert 100, but notice the quotes around it. That means it's a string or text, and I'm going to convert it to a decimal. And I'm hitting F10 to step through. Notice it's 100 with no, des uh, no um, double quotes. Here's the double quotes. I assign blue to this variable, and I compare. The tag color blue is not equal to red, and it comes down here. It's equal to blue. Notice we enter the true part. We sign 0.35 to the discount. We come down here. We take the discount, which is a float, contemporarily convert to a decimal, multiply by a decimal, and store it in a decimal. I take the discount amount, which is $35, back it away from the $100 price, and I get a price of 65. I format it as a percentage of two decimal and currency with two. And I hit F5 to continue. And there's a blue, $100, 35% discount, I pay 65. Let's type in red. We hit compute. Same conversions happen. I'm hitting F10 to, to um, step through the code. There you go. This is true. Let me come in here. And there you go. Let's enter gold just for comparison's sakes. Come in here. Notice, we t and I'm going to come back and talk about this line in a minute. It's not red, not blue, not purple. We set no discount. We do the calculation. And there you go. And let's type purple but all uppercase, and let's see what happens then. We come in, we convert. Now you would think this would work, but it doesn't, because we're comparing uppercase purple to purple with a capital P and lowercase, and it's not a match, not this, and it's not this, so we get 0%. Discount, we execute. There you go. I want to show you why I coded things a certain way, but i got to end the program before I can make changes. So I stop it and I come over here. I didn't need to declare this variable s tag as I did as a string and put it into here. I could have done this, but you'll see your code would have gotten much bigger and much more complex. So what I did, instead of dealing with the text box and the dot text property, I did it once, put in a variable and used it. I also like to bring your attention to here. Another way you could have coded it is like this. You could have put them all on one line. Notice you don't have to repeat the d declaration data type, and you put commas to separate them. See, you can do that. Data type, the first variable, comma, the second variable. No need to repeat the decimal uh, reserve word in blue. And that works. But I want to show you a different way that I pr approach. I approach it, and I actually prefer from all my years in the industry. This is a combination of listing them all and putting them all on one line this way. You put the data type, you put the first variable, comma, the second on a second line, comma, the third on a third line, semicolon to end it. Another thing we can do is let's look at the calculation. You can see this is done in one line. Well, guess what we could do too? We can do something like this. I've got a little carried away. There you go. These two lines get compressed into one. And since I'm doing the calculation within the parentheses, remember the law of precedence, I convert this to a decimal, multiply it by the shoe price, and then just and subtract it away. And actually, I can get rid of these two lines. And I actually don't need this discount amount. The blue squiggles up here means it's not used. So I save myself one variable and two lines of code. Now, let's go look at the calculation. You can see that it is on one line. Some people might find this harder to read, but it is an option, and I did want to show, show it to you as an option. So let's put in uh, blue. 100. Come through the code. There you go. And we 
step through it and we run it and there you go same result